Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, welcome back to part two of our warehouse and two city cluster discussion. In part one, we built a, a beautiful little two city cluster supported by a warehouse. We've got cotton and uh, cattle going in directly to Toledo. We've got a nice little situation here and we're gonna pick it up from here and, and, and meet kind of phase two challenges that are about to hit us. And off we go. One, two, why not three. All right, so now we have beautiful situation here. We've got, and actually this one has stopped growing for some reason. Our brewery is good. Oh, good, now they put a sawmill. A sawmill is an okay choice. I don't mind the sawmill at all. The other choice you could have there is, would be clothing. But now what's interesting is, now we have a problem. We have this exchange here, and it's just changing goods for us. The the um, uh, excuse me, the meat and the beer. But now we're starting to create lumber. Well, we'd love to have the lumber go up here too. So now we've got to think about what are we going to do next. So we could think of this as now we've we've approached phase two. Now the other way to do this is if we had been watching, and I lost track. When this guy grew enough to build this, we could have bought this, or we could have put it in ourselves. And if we had done that, guess what we would have done? We would have put clothing in there, not lumber. The reason we would have put clothing is because the, um, no, actually, same problem. I take it back here again, for, pretend I didn't say that. It doesn't matter because we have the same problem either way. And our problem is that we now have goods that are not being exchanged between these two cities. So here's, here's the trade-off. Because we decide to exchange the goods in this warehouse, we now have a problem. We're not exchanging uh, all of our goods. We're only exchanging some of them, right? Because we're starting to make lumber, and as these grow, they're all, the, both, both cities are gonna make two more things, probably clothing and uh, who knows, maybe, I don't know, uh, dairy or uh, alcohol or something. And they'll make something else and hopefully we'll control it and make something we like, but um, we need to be able to ship those goods. They're not making doing any good if we can't ship them. So what could we do? Well, one thing we could do, of course, would be build another warehouse and set up a new chain with more stuff. And really, if it, it depend upon at this point, it would depend upon our objectives. If we needed to grow these cities even bigger, that would be a great thing to do. Build another warehouse, start running a line. It would cost us some money because we got to do some skipping and jumping and stuff. In fact, if you look at that, you'd say, well, Danny, you big dummy, why didn't you run these two out here into it that way? And, and uh, that way you'd have an exchange. Or here's another thought. We put a warehouse on this side and we, now we go, okay, here's an exception. Let's run our cattle and our cotton into the warehouse, run our lumber into the warehouse, run our textiles into the warehouse. So that's four. Then we could throw in two more things that we need, veggies and uh, milk. I think there's milk down here, milk. We could throw veggies and milk in there. So we'd have veggies, milk, lumber, textiles, cotton and uh, cattle, and we wouldn't have these crossing lines and wouldn't that be just lovely? So why don't we do that? Let's just keep a nice organized approach here. We will throw in a warehouse on this side and have 12 more things covered. All right. So we would have to bite the bullet and do some deleting. That's okay. Uh, we may even have to delete, some, delete a train or two to make this work. Now, if you were in a game where the money mattered to you, and money always matters, by the way. But if you were in a game where it really mattered to you, like a, a scenario where you're tight on funds or whatever, would you do these deletions? Yeah, you still would. You still just might do them. Um, and why is that? Because there's a trade-off here between the money that you're going to spend, the money that you would spend to set that up, and the money you would save by not having these weird lines and the, just being able to move quickly to a new organization. So let's go in. 
and say, now we want another warehouse. We're going to put it on this side so it'll not look nice and balanced, be very pretty. Uh, let's turn it the same way we did before. Lovely. Now we're going to have a line that runs like so and comes down here into our open slot. By the way, it wasn't an accident that I chose one of these two inner lines to build my first first uh, line in. You don't want to use one of the end ones because you know the end ones are going to end up being lines where you bring stuff freight into the system. So while that may have appeared to be an accident, it was not. And I do want to stub this out again. And give them a supply power. And while we're thinking of it, let's do it on the other side too. Now, in, and we're going to set up repairs in this warehouse, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. And what are we putting in this one? We decided we're going to go with cattle. We're going to go with cotton. We're going to go with textiles and lumber. And then we want to throw a couple more goodies in there. So the ones we don't have are milk and veggies. So bingo, now we've got this beautiful warehouse for all that stuff, and we rinse and repeat. In other words, we do the same thing we did for that other warehouse. Run the line in. Double track it. Actually, right here, I'm going to actually delete these little stubs and get them out of my way for a moment. That'll delete back to the uh, supply tower and double track into my into Grand Rapids. So we lay our track, we set our directional signals. So we check for supplies, we're good, and we use our tool to set our interims. Beautiful, I really like that, that's cool. Okay, so now we're gonna to wanna to, want to run a line between here and here. Of course, right now I don't get nothing. But, uh, so let's wait a minute. Now we wanna bring veggies up like this, corn like this, cotton like this, Textiles will be running here. Was there oh, a milk? What did we say? Milk? Milk can come over here and come in this side. So our veggies and cattle can come in. Remember, we always say the bottom two for our city, so they have clean shots. So we don't need, oops, we don't need this. And let's clean these up in a minute. Let's go ahead and run our line to the city, to Toledo. And I think, yeah, and we can use that line we had, we had originally set up for the cattle and cotton to come in, that, this part down here. So all we've got to do is bring this back. Okay. Lay your track. Set your directional signals, and I, I know I keep saying this over and over, but just you got to get that habit. Because how many times have you seen me in my videos screw that up and not have that uh, set? So set your directional. The other one's already set. Make sure you get supplies. Get he's actually getting them twice, and do your thing with your tool to um, 
<laughs> to uh, uh, set up your interim uh, signals. Sorry, I'm entertaining myself here. <laughs> That's a, sorry. Oh man, That's several awful, awful puns. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Forgive me, forgive me. Okay. Oh God. All right. So now we're going to run a line back and throw our veggies in there. And we want to use that line. And double track it. Like so. We lay our what do we do after we lay our track? Oh, I know. We set our directional signals. And we make sure we, we check to make sure we got supplies, and we do. If we didn't, what would we do? We'd obviously build a tower. Then we set up our interim signals, and we have a nice line. And this one will go ahead and start feeding. Uh, I want you to run full to our second warehouse. Oh, and I said I was going to do something with security guards, and I didn't didn't finish off that thought, did I? So let me start another train. And uh, uh, here's what I wanted to point out about this, because we have that hired security guard just sitting there. It, you wouldn't want to put a security guard on these guys. They don't get paid, right? They get squat. You want to put your security guards on these guys who make a lot of money. Look at look at the money this guy's making now. And we're going to put a security guard in there. Why? Because he gives you a 5% increase in freight prices. So now you're getting more bang for your buck from him because he's getting 5% basically of whoever comes in there to that warehouse and runs back down here. So you'll see a 5% bump on that $6,000 right there. So that's nice. All right. So that's how you use your security guards. Now, your engineers and your real money maker, though, still would be these guys pretty consistently. Although really, frankly, I'll tell you, these uh, lines that run freight back and forth from the warehouse are just as good or maybe better. But this is where you would tend to put your stokers and your engineers because they have longer lines and they can break down more. And definitely your conductor because he gives you a 10% increase in your mail profits. So by making things run smoothly, so to speak, that's the justification for that. So now we need to reload our cattle in here. And we can either merge or we can just grab this other one. It's not going to be a big deal either way. The simplest one is just to grab this one if I can. Shouldn't be this hard. There we go. It's an awfully tight turn. There we go. All right, so now we've got uh, a line. So we lay our track. And we double track it. And what did I do wrong? Something. Something was not quite kosher about that. Okay, lay our track, double track it. sure we have supplies we do and bingo now our cattle will start feeding
Now, do we want that security guard on here? No, because he's not going to get paid, right? But what we really want to do is now we want to start grabbing stuff that's coming out of there. We have nothing coming out of here now. We want to have a line going from here to here. It could have been vice versa. It doesn't really matter. And that line, by the way, I should have grabbed him, is where we would want to put our security line. So one, let's put two, let's put three, and let's build a line from this warehouse to here. Again, it could have been the other way around. Probably would have been better to start at the other end. Oh, no matter, it's getting beef, that's good, or cattle. Two, three, we'll run three to start with. So now we need to move our cotton. Our cotton has to go into the warehouse. We've got cotton and milk going to be coming over here. So let's run them into, we can run the, uh, let's see, I want to stop, I want to, I think I'm going to run them into each of the two. So I'm going to put a little stub on there just to make sure that milk can fit, that milk line. And and then run my line for cotton. Okay, because I know the milk is coming from over here, and I want to make sure I can get in. Because I uh, actually, you know what? Forget that. We're just going to run it. It doesn't matter because I'm, I'm going to merge the lines. We don't need to build extra line. These are small lines. I'll, I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Okay, so here's. Set our directional signals. Check for supplies. Set our interim signals and we've got ourselves a line. And then we can, this one train we didn't delete, he's been sitting there waiting. We're gonna say, don't go to Toledo, go here. And he's finally happy to finally have an assignment we'll give him some buddies and then we'll go get our milk and then we'll kind of wrap this up so we go get our milk and we may as well there are not that many trains running here we're going to merge it with this line save ourselves a dollar or two Plus, keep having, keep from having so much truck, truck, track <clears throat> running all over the place. And I want to talk about some trade-offs. There's still plenty of stuff to talk about here. But we lay our track. We set our signals. By the way, I, what did I skip there, folks? I didn't do my three-step process for the merge, did I? So that merge is not going to work. Now, why is it? See this right here? See that error? We can never get to that line. So we need to... So I got out of rhythm there. I didn't do it in my right order. When you come in and merge, you have to merge with the first line, scoot over, and then check your signals. Remember that? And we're going to put a, go this way. Do not drive on this side. So now if we go back and look, see, this is fine. Everything works. Why is that? Because now, before, when you came down here, there would be no way to get back because we didn't have that crossover and we didn't have our lines going the right direction. And I also failed right here. Should have done that. Now, 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 everything's running the way it down. Now it looks good. All right. Our milk will get supplies. It's a really long line, so we're going to give it an extra supply tower just because that's a long line going down through there. And let's set up three trains to run milk. There's no magic in three. I know I keep doing three, but there's no magic in it. In this case, 
There's magic in three, I guess, in other contexts, but not here. One, two, three. Okay, now we have this beautiful situation where we can exchange goods. We can exchange four different goods, lumber and textiles and meat and beer. And we can get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different raw materials to feed these cities. And Grand Rapids right now isn't growing. This looks like it's not getting enough weed. It's not getting meat. Isn't that interesting? I wonder why that is. Okay. We look at our warehouse. We're having a hard time keeping it supplied with wheat and corn, which says we probably need. We could conceivably leave need, uh, excuse me, more trains here. We could think about buying this, although it's going to be very expensive, and bumping up its production. Our corn is probably, three is probably not enough for that far of, of a trip. So we'll give it a couple more. And And then we could also think about, do we have enough trains running right here? Oh, we do not. We only have two trains. That's our big problem. He's not getting enough because he needs help. We need to have more trains running on this little line right here to go out here and grab stuff and bring it back. Okay? So as he brings stuff back, that'll help him. Then Toledo... Is the same thing. We've been remiss here. We didn't balance these out. I said we'd come back and talk about balancing, and we haven't done that. So we're going to bump up the number of trains running out of here and out of here to take stuff out of this warehouse. So all these goods will start flowing to the warehouse where they should be. Now, that's also, by the way, an interesting trade off. If you notice a couple of things here, because we decided to do our goods exchange in this warehouse, so way back in the beginning, we made a decision. To, to put meat and beer in this warehouse. Now, imagine if we hadn't done that. If we'd said, well, you know what? Let's run our um, meat and beer on a separate line. And in this broad warehouse, we could have had one, we could have had wheat, corn, logs, um, sugar, and veggies and milk, right? Because we would add two more slots. We would have had a line running back and forth exchanging the goods. And then over here, we wouldn't have even needed this one. Uh, we could have kept our cattle and our, our uh, cotton running directly. And then our lumber and our um, textiles would be exchanged on the freight line. And then the only reason we would want to have a line here is for milk and veggies, which we could either run directly or we could start another warehouse, but the warehouse would be for, for other things. So as these th cities get way bigger, then we're going, we won't bring in fruit for sure. We would bring fruit in there. We would maybe bring clay later on. We could bring iron ore or coal if it gets to that point, you know, where we get uh, big cities where we're building that kind of stuff. So I think if you look at this, if you look at all the trade-offs, I think that uh, this is a beautiful setup, uh, for, first of all. I mean, look at that. That's just, uh, that's, that's lovely. We've got, it's very efficient. It's very lovely. I mean, how's, how's, how's old Toledo doing? Toledo's up to 97,000. Look at this. We can put our own industry in there. What do we need? We need clothing. We absolutely need clothing. Now, now the good thing about clothing is we can put it there. But, again, here's that trade-off. Now we've got clothing as a potential thing that we could share, but that clothing's not getting shared because there's no room in the warehouse. So, having said all of this, what I would recommend you do is, I think the ideal setup is a line for passengers, a separate line for freight, a, and then warehouses to hold 
only raw materials. So don't do your goods exchange if you're going to do a true cluster like this. Don't do goods exchange in the warehouse. Do the goods exchange on this separate line because that separate line, the, the advantage of it would be that it would be able to grab whatever our, our two, they were going to end up with six total um, goods being purchased or uh, produced here and it would grab whatever they are and move them to the other city. So, so that would be lovely. And the other thing is you don't need a billion trains to do that because half the goods are being consumed in the city where they, or they originate, right? So you're only, you're only shipping half your goods off to the other city. <clears throat> Pardon me. So uh, anyway, this is a beautiful setup. I like this. It has a certain symmetry to it. It, it makes a good use of the warehouses. Uh, it flows nicely. It didn't cost us a fortune to set it up. We've grown Toledo up to, what did I say, 90, 97. It's going to be on 100,000 soon. And look at this. It's only 1831. We're a year and a half in, and we've built Toledo up to, to almost 100. And we've built Grand Rapids up to 54. So when it hits that 60 mark, we'll get a museum there. And it'll grow like crazy. And it really isn't doing as great as it should. But I think what's going to happen here, and I'll tell you one thing I would do. I don't like this right here. I see one thing I don't like when I look at this. Is this, all this waiting right here. It's too much waiting. Right here with the uh, logs and the... Uh, Wait, see how they're stacked up? That's no good. That's uh, that's delays. So what I would think would be a better thing to do to, if we were going to kind of repair our, our work. We would actually do something more like this. Now that may... Whoa, <laughs> no, don't do that, don't do that. We will need a giant loop. We would do that. And in fact, I believe we can just delete that. And I think this will still work. Yeah, see, he's got, he's just gonna switch and start going this way. And that being said, we might run, want to run a couple of them in there. But what this is gonna do, we might even run three in there. Remember, we've got that lumber business too, which is sucking up a lot more of the logs. So if we do it like this, as silly as it may look, to run backwards. Now, doing this, what we've got is the ability to run three trains and have a much steadier supply. Come here. Did I run it out of the same one? I did. <laughs> They're still going to compete. Let's let's just uh, let's go with this and see what happens. Uh, I forgot one thing. Okay, and let's clone this puppy. Be able to run more than one train. Okay. Now they're going to take turns like this going in. There. Oh, oh, and one other thing I wanted to talk about. Remember how we set our repairs here? We set this is a repair, and we set this is a repair. Your ideal scenario really is you don't do warehouse supplies or repairs. Reason being that this is where all the action is. You don't want people being serviced and holding everything up. So it's really good. So what I would do, one thing that would help, even if we didn't take the warehouse supplies off, is to... to when, we, when you have good money, go ahead and set up your, your repairs out here on the endpoints. It costs a lot more, but because you've got the maintenance going on out here at the end, you're not holding up any other lines that might be competing for that, that precious uh, space in, your, in the warehouse itself, okay? I'm not going to do them all, but just to get to, give you the idea. So then what we could do, in fact, is take the... the this is why you have this. We could demolish the maintenance building in the warehouse so that no more repairs are taking place there. And that will actually speed up the throughput going, going, uh, going through that warehouse. So, whoops, whoops, whoops. 
Or I did maintenance on that. Don't even remember doing that. Uh, let's see, what's the other one going? I did corn. But anyway, there we go. All right, so I would take the same, if you did this again, I would take the same look, only have another line that runs through here with freight and have that one uh, carrying my, my freight back and forth. And then that then I'd have 12 items. I could have 12 um, raw materials in my in between these two warehouses. And that would also and the other thing that would do, here's the other other advantage to that and why I would do it that way, is because these guys here no longer have to have to carry now now the disadvantage is they don't get them they're deadheading back, right? But they're not getting paid for that anyway, so it doesn't matter. But they don't have to carry the meat and beer back to the other cities and they're free to just get the raw materials. So you'd get a better flow of raw materials into your city. All right, so I hope that makes sense. We would wanna do it, I think that's the way I would recommend. I would recommend doing it with, um, well here, see we are catching up a little bit. There, we're getting some good logs now. We're starting to get ahead on the, uh, just by making that loop and the changing it a little bit, that's helped a bunch. Um, even though they still are competing for the same piece of track. And what we could do to even fix that even better, obviously, here, here let's, let's, let's truly fix it. Let's delete that. I don't think this is going to let me do this. No. We're going to delete back here a ways. I have to get rid of the train. Delete that. Delete that. Okay, and then we're going to run this line over here. So that my logs and, and uh, wheat, which are both important, are not competing with one another. Fix the signals that we just destroyed. And, and give them back the train I just deleted. And here we go. Now, now we should see better flow. Now our logs can get in there straight away. So these, these log trains can move in and do their thing very quickly. So he's coming in as soon as the other one got out of the way. And now our wheat can come straight in. The only thing the wheat's competing with is over here with the corn that's coming in from long distance. So he's going to get more opportunities to come in to the station because the corn comes in less, less frequently because it's a, just three trains from a long distance. So now we're going to start seeing, we're going to start seeing our wheat build up and our logs stay nice and steady so that our trains can, uh, our city trains, the ones going from the warehouse to the city, can take more goods back more often and, and help us grow even faster. And again, I'll say for the 18th time, sorry, I, 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 after doing this and looking at it carefully, I would not put the meat and beer in here, even though it's very tempting and it just seems like such a great way to share stuff. And maybe you could do that to get started. And here we go. Grand Rapids has now hit the magic point of 60 where we can put a museum in. And off it goes. And again, we're still in our, first, our second year. We're in our second year and we've got all this set up. And by the way, now that we've got these warehouses, we could throw Indianapolis in here if we wanted to and build links to the warehouse for Indianapolis and feed it out the same one, or we could build another warehouse system over here. But obviously, one easy thing to do would be, if this is a great two-city cluster, we could have built it as a, maybe I'll do another one. You, you tell me if you want me to. I can build another one that's a three-city cluster and show you how to do that with the warehouses if you think you'd like to see that. 
but I really like this one. I just it's just got a nice symmetry to it. It just they, the cities grow like crazy. It's super easy to manage. Um, you know, it just um, there's a certain elegance here that I really like. Um, another, by the way, I just thought of another good way to do this thing. Um, we could have done a loop, a circle out of one of the things out of one and like this, and let this one kind of merge in, and let them both go in circles around that would have been kind of that would have been kind of cute actually um let them go in circles to do to go through the same uh one but it's kind of six of one half a dozen the other these are all going through like this or they're taking turns coming in and out of that one so okay all right enough babbling i hope i hope uh this has been helpful to you i actually um i've thought about this multiple times and and i think i've come to conclusions about uh warehouses that I, 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 in general, I like warehouses to hold raw materials. And now after seeing this, I definitely do. There are times when you'd want to do um, manufactured, oh yeah, no, we don't want that. Uh, do manufacture goods in the warehouses. And I'll try to come up with a scenario where that would be a good approach. And maybe we'll do a video on that. So let's, let's, this is getting pretty long. Let's cut it off right here. All right, so that wraps up our first look at warehouses in a two-city cluster. Now, to give you an idea, coming down the road, I'm going to do a follow-up video where I take that same starting point, and I'm going to build kind of what I would think of as, after all that that we saw, the ideal two-city cluster with warehouses, and that'll be warehouses holding raw materials only with that freight line running, and I'll show you how to set that up and how that what that should look like and exactly... Uh, what I would think of as kind of a uh, quote ideal, unquote, because there's no such thing as ideal, but as close as we can come, ideal setup for a two-city cluster using warehouses uh, 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 the correctly. That'll be one. Another thing I think we're going to do is do one, um, I, I mentioned at the end of this one, of um, probably a, like a regional warehouse and show and show some ideas about how you might use a warehouse to store manufactured goods that need to be um, shared in other places, like like long shares, like I'm talking about like a three city cluster in one spot wants to, is creating something like tools, something unusual, uh, you know, I don't mean unusual, but late game thing like tools, and they're not using them all up, why not ship them off and send them somewhere else? I'll come up with a scenario like that and show you how to do that. But I think the biggest thing for you to learn really is, is how to do a two city cluster with the warehouses, keep everything organized, keep everything flowing, grow your cities quickly and make a whole lot of money while you do it. So I hope this has been helpful for you and uh, we'll stop right there. There will be at least a couple more, certainly one more, maybe two more in the warehouse series uh, coming up down the road. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player and I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.